Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's the 1st of February, 2022, the month of love, and we'll celebrate it here in grand style because love is beautiful, and we do it every single year. And then we'll get on to Ghana month in March and on and on and on. So TV3 Media General is always busy throughout the year, day by day, week on week, month by month. We are sharing something special with you. And that's why you have to stay with us because we are number one. Hashtag it, Johnny's Bite. Share it, like it, let them know that we are back to talk about the real issues. We are keeping our focus. We will not be derailed or unsettled. Last Friday and Saturday, I was at the Accra International uh, Airport, Akutka International Airport. I had received a call and had been invited to join the official launch of the uh, Magdan Private Jet Lounge, the Terminal 1. I've seen photos and, and a few videos of me and a few of my colleagues because I was there with Winston Amwa, Kojo Yangsin, Nathaniel Ato, Alexis Bill, um, Roger Quarte, uh, a couple of us. But for good reason, well, I've been singled out. That's fine. And people are saying, well, interest, interest, interest. I said, okay, that's okay. But yesterday I saw also a letter suggesting, uh, and I'll spend just a little time on this one, suggesting that, well, McDonald may have done something wrong and that the Ghana Airport Company Limited had written a letter, blah, 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 blah. So this is akin to a landlord who has a tenant who wants to host a party. The landlord says, I will not agree to the party. I don't live in the house with them. The party goes on regardless. The landlord sits at the gate and allows the party guests to get in. The party is done that the landlord starts complaining to everybody in the community that the party should not have happened. If you're a regulator, and I just said it yesterday, by all means, if McDan is wrong, hold him accountable because I believe in that. So naturally, we should have been stopped at the gate because the airport is a security installation. We were not stopped. We came to Terminal 1. The security were there. No national security was there. I saw military police there. I saw proper police there. But you see, I have both NDC and MPP friends. And I will not adopt anybody's enemies because you, they are your enemy or because you don't agree with them. I'm too smart for that. I have both NDC and MPP friends. And you see, even for... Those one district, one factories that are made and you have old companies that are refurbished, a little support is given to them and then they can employ a few people. You ask us to applaud that. This is 100% Ghanaian owned, creating jobs and that's my focus, that's my interest. Jobs that will be created, number one. The foreign direct investments, number two. And all the other things that will add on to it. That for me is the focus. Whether somebody was right, somebody was wrong, I don't care. And you have, if you're an enforcer of the law and you decide rather to be a crybaby in public writing letters and you're not taking action, that's none of my spiritual business. So yes, I have an interest. My interest is that I speak about NAPCO young people not being employed. If somebody is going to create a, a, a employment for 400 people and NAPCO guys who were promised permanency are going to get some to do, I will support that person because that is my first interest. Because if they don't have jobs to do, they may be used by dangerous people, idle hands. The devil will use them. I don't want that. So for me, this is all I will say. And... If the plane comes again, I will ride in it again. Because when I got the call, they were excited about the work I do, and they decided that of all the over 30 million people in Ghana, I should be one of the few 15 or so that went on that trip. So I'm happy about it. End of story. Now, there's a lot of conversation about Ayahuasca West Wogon and the by-election. We know what happened there. And if you pull the visuals, I'm sure we can find, we can refresh our memories of what happened at our Yawasu West Wogon. There was a tough uh, by-election between Ma Lydia, she's called Lydia Lassan, and John Dumelo, who's an actor, a farmer, and entrepreneur. This had happened because, and that's Honorable Sam George, MP for Dingo Pram Pram, who was slapped. And then the report said he was provo uh, they, whoever slapped him was provoked. But you see, when this happened with all the shootings and people being maimed and all of that three years on, the eight people who have to be compensated have not been compensated. They are still hoping and believing that something will happen. 
And you see, until we begin to talk about these things, it will engender and embolden others to go ahead and do a similar thing. You slap a member of parliament, people are shot. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's like a movie. It's happening. It's like a movie. It's like a movie. It's happening. And, and the, the whole thing is that having grown up in a barracks, you would usually have a, a senior man controlling affairs. It looked like on that occasion, there was no control. Everybody was doing what they wanted. And this happened in Ghana. Three years on, the pain is still there. And then we hurriedly passed a law. Act 999. People that are for me. Act 999. The vigilantism law. Beautiful law. Very, very beautiful law. We put it up there nicely. But when we finish the law, the question that comes to mind is, no, not this one. The act. Act 999. Vigilantism and other of, uh, related offenses act. So we pulled, we pulled this law up. And we decided that as a country, we're going to have a situation where we will have a certain regulation and legislation that will uh, stop these things. So Act 999, we said application, disbandment of vigilante groups, prohibition of vigilante groups and activities, aiding and abetting of the groups, funding of vigilante groups, pro prohibition of vigilantism in political party activity, blah, 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 miscellaneous interpretation. We did all of that. We have written all this beautiful law. It was enacted in 2019. It got presidential accent. There's something in the law that I want to show you this morning about a certain legislative instrument, LI, as the lawyers call it, that must be put up to allow for this law to be properly fleshed so that the law can be applied. But in this present form and without the LI, it will be hampered in its implementation. So it's the same thing with the Narcotics Commission Act that we are part of that. You are permitted a certain regime for growing narcotics, weed, and all of that for industrial and medicinal purposes. But it's difficult to implement if, <coughs> sorry, the legislative instrument that will determine the licensing regime is not passed. So the ally is supposed to give flesh to the mother provision. So minus the ally, it's difficult to determine what constitutes political party activities, for instance. That is what it is. Now, the regulations, 10, miscellaneous provisions, regulations. It says the minister may, within 12 months after the coming into force of this act, by legislative instrument, make regulations which are necessary to give effect to this act. Now, who is this minister we are talking about? Read this. It says minister means the minister responsible for justice. That is our attorney general. Honorable Godfrey Dami, good morning to you. We passed this law in 2019 after we saw the mess at Ayawas West were gone. And you see, what's interesting is that this law also has a portion on vigilantism and langardism. But the interesting thing is that we're told that all these groups, as soon as the law comes into force in 2019, all these groups, the Hawks, Invisible Forces, Delta Force, Azoka Boys, Bamba Boys, Kandaha Boys, Boga Bulldogs, 66 Bench, Al Jazeera, Al Qaeda, Aluta Boys, Asamankese Forces, Bafira, Bukrisong, Bema Camp, The Crocodiles, Eastern Members, Bewa Youth, Lions, NATO Forces, Pentagon, Rasta Boys, CC Group, Taliban Boys, The Dragons, The Rock, Tohazi, all these groups will be disbanded. These are the groups. Can the Minister for Justice, Honorable Godfrey Dami, who was Deputy Attorney General at the time, now he's the boss in charge. Our Interior Minister, Honorable Ambrose Derry, who was still our Interior Minister in the past. Our Defense Minister, Honorable Dominic Nitiwo, who was our Defense Minister then and still now. Our National Security Minister, the Honorable uh, Albert Kandapa, who was and still is. And all the other people who work within that space. Can they honestly and boldly tell Ghanaians that these groups have been disbanded and that what we saw at Ayawasu West were gone three years ago, we would not see them again? Can they honestly say that?
It also became clear that people are holding guns, lots and lots of guns. Can they boldly say that these guns have been taken away from the people? Can they boldly say that because people were not punished, as was recommended by the commission, for whatever reason, whether it be political expediency or what, can they say that this would not embolden people to say in 2024, we are going to do whatever it takes to make sure that our candidate wins? Let's be careful not to set our nation on fire. I didn't set up this law. You did. I'm no parliamentarian. I didn't write a memorandum to support or to make a claims in this. And show us the videos of the victims. So people who are not aware can have a clear idea how people were victimized. People were brutalized. People were maimed and shot because of a by-election. One by-election. Show the videos for them, please. Because of a by election. Now, there's also a portion in it, and which is connected because there are, there are those who every single day will come to TV3 and will ask you, I bought a, a plot of land, and then there are people who have taken over my plot of land. A person shall not direct, directly or indirectly facilitate organize or promote the organization of land guards for the purposes of protecting or guarding land or property, whether belonging to that person or any other person. A person who contravenes subsection 1 commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than 10 years and no more than 15 years. A person shall not act as a land guard. Can our ministers that I mentioned, uh, Attorney General, Defense, Interior, National Security, National Security Coordinator, our IGP, our CDS, can they boldly look us in the face this morning? Three years on, 2019, 2020, 2021, we're in 2022. Can they look us in the face to say we have stopped Langardism in this country? Can they look us in the face to say we have stopped? So we are happy to pass laws. We are happy to put English together like we have beautiful English. The ally that will support it we are hesitant to put it up. And that's a victim. His leg is gone. Imagine that he was the only breadwinner. Just imagine it. Imagine that he was the only breadwinner. And for three years, eight of them who were supposed to have been compensated, we put together a respected former IGP, we put together a respected former boss of Shiraj, we put together a very, very respected, uh, what do you call it as well, a uh, professor of law who has later become a, a, a Supreme Court judge. Three of them. Professor Bochi was also there. Respected individuals who had achieved a lot in their, um, what do you call it, in their, in their fields of endeavor. This is one of eight of them. And they were shot because what, we, somebody had to get into power. Because two people were going for an election. As of now, the individuals who perpetrated that have not been punished. So somebody else will be emboldened to do the same thing. And it must take some of us to be able to say it. You can hate me, I don't care. The truth is only one, and we all know the truth. Privately, they tell you that this is bad. Publicly, they defend it. What is wrong is wrong. What is right is right. So this is a wake-up call. Get the ally, hold people accountable, disband the vigilante groups, stop the langardism. Once you do that, you will see that everything will be peaceful because based on Previous happenings, you assume that the people whose family members were maimed when they are coming for the 2024 elections, they will come like Catholic priests or Anglican priests. No. And that is where the problem will be. So we are always happy to say, oh, uh, police station A constituency B are flashpoints. We announce them. If you identify a problem and you say somewhere is a flashpoint, what do you do to make sure that it no longer becomes a flashpoint.
And every single election since 1992, our flashpoints keep increasing. It means that the impudence is growing. So it's not about passing laws because already on our statute books, we have too many laws to deal with some of these things. But we decided that we're creating a certain special law. The president had to intervene at some point. He had to even give the parties an ultimatum. I remember that. Now the law has been passed. Is the law being effected? Are we enforcing the law? And I don't want any crybaby business. If you're a law enforcer, enforce the law. Your job is not to complain to the public why you couldn't enforce the law. Your job is to enforce the law. Let's go to a few quickly, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Kojo Poku has asked a very important question, and he says he wants to be president of the republic. Kojo, good morning to you. Uh, now, he's asked a very important question. Very, very important question. He's asking about the price stabilization levy. He's asking where our 1.2 billion is. He says the finance minister should account to Ghanaians. And this has been about three months ago. The finance minister has not accounted for this, but he's asking for e-levy. This is a lot of money. He said the Institute for Energy Policies and Research is calling on the Minister of Finance as a matter of urgency to give accounts to Ghanaians on the 1.26 billion accrued from the price stabilization recovery levy PSR since 2015. And you know what this means? It means that, <coughs> sorry, like I explained, when global prices, eh, when global prices are up, whatever we have accrued from this price stabilization and recovery levy is used to cushion us. When global prices drop, we collect money from the local people and we store the money. So we become wise like the serpent or the ant. You save for the rainy day. Kojopoku says we have saved 1.26 billion from our price stabilization and recovery levy. Now, uh, the release they are putting up, ASEP also asked, they estimated the total amount paid by Ghanaians as a result of PSRL to be 2.53 billion. As per the Act 899, part of this levy is to subsidize premix and residual fuel oil and the balance to be used to stabilize petroleum prices for consumers. Last week, the president gave executive approval, blah, 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 that we should take these things off. So there are 16 pesos for gasoline, 14 pesos for diesel, and to be reduced by zero. This reduction are told by government, blah, blah, blah. We're giving that two months uh, break, right? Now, we are back to square one because whatever was given to us has been taken away. And this is evidence to prove same. 31st January 2022, it says... Restoration of the price stabilization and recovery levies on petroleum, diesel, LPG, effective 1st February 2021. Ladies and gentlemen of the Republic of Ghana, the global prices have not dropped. Uh, have not dropped. They are still up there. Petrol is still expensive. So the question is, why are we restoring the levies when the principle in the law says that when the prices are high, use what you have stored to cushion the consumers. And then when the prices are low, you collect more. The prices are high, and yet we are restoring the levies. Question is, hey, Nasikanu wahe. Hey, Nasikanu wahe. Now it says, we refer to a letter dated 11 January 2022 on the subject matter, extension of the zeroing of price stabilization recovery levy from the price buildup uh, to 31st January 2022. As per the said letter mentioned above, the National Petroleum Authority informed you that government has approved an extension of the removal of the PSRL on petrol, diesel, LPG for another month for after the original two months removal ended on the 31st of December 2021. So this is it. You are going to get 16 pesos added onto uh, your, your petrol diesel 14 pesos, LPG 14 pesos, and is signed by Mustafa Abdulhamid, PhD. He's the chief executive officer, same person who wrote. So this morning, if you go to the pump, you will buy your fuel at a higher rate. But while we are at it, and we are asking this question of where the 1.26 billion is, and I'll do some calculations. So write 1.26 billion, put it down. Now, there's another portion of accountability that we'll have to ask. State-owned enterprises, they posted 586.4 million losses in 2019. State-owned enterprises. 
They are under SIGA. So Gihok is part, all those ones, state-owned enterprises. They are declaring losses. So we could make savings from there. Now, again, president has told them that they should reverse the losses to profits making. This story is written by Julius K. Sachi Accra of the Finder newspaper. And it's been detailed how much we are losing. Now, on this occasion in 2020, mind you, in 2019, we lost 586.4 million. For four million in 2019. Fast forward to 2020, how much did we lose? We lost a billion, 500 and something billion. That's it. In 20, uh, what do you call it? In 20, um, in 20, sorry, in 2020, we're losing 5.3 billion. 5.3 billion is on the front page of the finder. 5.3 billion. So add 5.3 billion in 2020 to the 1.26 that Kojo Poku is asking for. And you know that the E-Levy, which is supposed to generate just about 7 billion, we could have saved this. Already I told you in the weeks gone by that the Auditor General had told us that we're losing 12 billion. We lost 12 billion in 2020 alone. So add this one, 5.3 billion in 2020 from state-owned enterprises. Plus, what we lost in 2020, Auditor General, 12 billion. If you add 12 to this one, that's 17 billion and more. That is about three times or two and a half times what the E levy is supposed to generate. Question is, why would the government want to backtrack on the E levy and rather make savings there? So you put somebody as a CEO or managing director of a state owned enterprise. They are declaring losses. 2018, 2019, 2020, they are declaring losses. And you are still paying them the same amount of money that you would have paid them if they had made profit. Are we okay? The person is working. The person is declaring losses. He's not making profit. But the person is still enjoying their V8. The person is still enjoying their bungalow. The person is still enjoying their allowances. The person is still traveling and enjoying per diem. The person is still enjoying a huge salary. The person is still enjoying security. The person is still enjoying every single thing, but the person is not being productive. And you say Ghanaians should pay e -levy. You are asking us to sacrifice. What are you sacrificing? I didn't say, the president said, reverse, he said, reverse losses to profit making. If you set up somebody in an orange business, orange hawking business, and the president always, the person always come to declare losses, do you still give the person the full compliment or whatever it is, or you pause and audit for a fresh start? Since we put those people in those state-owned enterprises, have we been bothered to say you are declaring too many losses? This is your sack letter, go home. Let's put in more competent people who can turn the things around. What is holding us from declaring profits, profits but rather declaring losses? This is what the ordinary Ghanaian is asking. And on top of that, we have borrowed too much. There's no fiscal space to do additional borrowing. So you are paying people for declaring losses. They go to school, they bring a scorecard, is zero and you are still paying them how do you explain this how do you convince people that people who are making losses should still stay at post enjoy all the goodies and still make losses and you ask the people whose taxes are used to pay them to pay more taxes to do what we are paying more taxes to do more more of what more of paying people to be less productive more of paying people not to declare profit more of paying people to go to work and do what? Because if I come to work and I'm not able to hit my KPI, I'm not able to get sponsors, I'm not able to get the show and I'm a one rating, I'm not able to satisfy you, the viewer, I'll be asked to go home so that somebody else who is qualified will come. So question is, why has President Akufuado decided that all the people managing are state-owned enterprises who have been declaring losses are still at post, they are enjoying all the goodies and they are not being asked to go home or they are not being given you KPIs to say, if you don't achieve this by this, I'll sack you. He only says reverse it into profit and that is it. And they are declaring losses and you want me to pay a levy. Lai, lai. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Good morning.